The 1990s was an exciting time with some of the most important political and cultural events in world history. It was a time of rapid technological progress as well. For example, dial-up modems allowed young men to chat with babes online all day. Well, at least, we thought they were babes. There was other stuff going on too, though. MRI scanners were becoming faster and more affordable, and researchers were investigating how the brain responded to different stimuli. But what if the subject was doing nothing at all? In 1995, a man named Bharat Biswal scanned subjects when they were doing a task, in this case, pressing buttons at a certain rhythm, and also when they were simply resting, a condition called resting state. To his surprise, even after removing from the resting state data all physiological sources of noise he could think of, some kind of signal remained. Biswal then decided to extract the time series from the left motor cortex and correlate it with every other voxel's time series. Instead of the random correlations that one would expect, there was a strong correlation with the opposite hemisphere's motor cortex, suggesting that these two functionally similar regions, although physically distant from each other, generated similar patterns of activity even at rest. The following demonstration will give you an idea of what he did and what functional connectivity is. We'll use FSL for this demonstration, which you can download from the link below. You will also need to download the sample data set, which can be found here. To examine the time series of the sample data set, navigate to where you downloaded the file and type fossilize time series example data .nai.gz. This will open the file in the fossilize viewer. From the menu at the top of your window, click on View Time Series. This will open a time series panel at the bottom of the fossilized viewer. To scale the numbers relative to a mean of zero, and therefore make it slightly easier to read, click the Plotting Mode drop-down menu and select Normalized. Now, click on a random voxel anywhere in the brain, and then from the menu at the top of the screen, select Tools, Seed Correlation Pearson. The voxel you've currently selected will be a seed voxel. The time series of this seed voxel will be used as a reference. This will generate a connectivity map between your seed voxel and every other voxel in the brain, with hotter colors representing greater correlation. Click on the plus sign to keep this time series displayed, and also change the color. In this case, we'll change it to red. When you click on another voxel, its time series will be displayed in blue. This way, you can see how the time series of your seed voxel correlates or anti-correlates with the other voxels. You will also notice that a new file in the overlay list has been created, time series example data slash correlation. If you highlight this image by clicking on it, you can then set the min and max thresholds to only show those voxels that correlate with the seed region at or higher than a certain level. Let's set the min threshold to 0.3 and take a look at which voxels remain after we set this threshold. Before moving on, click the minus sign to remove the original seed voxels time course. Now let's see whether we can replicate one of the most well-known functional connectivity networks, the so-called default mode network. This network is a pattern of correlated regions, primarily the ventral medial prefrontal cortex and the posterior cingulate cortex. To find this network, use the voxel location fields and enter values of x equals 32, y equals 53, and z equals 16, and use this voxel as a seed for another functional connectivity analysis. You should see two large clusters that are correlated with each other. In other words, we've uncovered the default mode network. Now to replicate Bharat Biswal's 1995 finding, let's try placing a seed in the left motor cortex, which is roughly in this area, 42, 31, 30. 
correlation analysis reveals what is called the motor network, which is another robust network that we can find in virtually anyone. Click on the link below for a list of other networks and try to find them by using this correlation method. Now that you have an idea of what functional connectivity is, you're ready to begin using the Con Toolbox. In the next tutorial, we'll find out how to download it, how to install it, and how to start looking at some data. All of that, and more, once I get my dial-up modem working again. And yes, this is what it sounded like. Two squirrels molesting each other.